In this video, I will show you how you can run Kali Linux inside a Docker container and display the full desktop on Windows. I will show you three ways how to do it that you hopefully didn't know about. We will build the Docker image from scratch, then we will run the container and start Kali Linux. This is not the first time that I'm running Linux inside a Docker container and display the full desktop on Windows. In a previous video, I showed you how you can run the full Ubuntu Cinnamon desktop inside a Docker container on Windows. So if you're interested how that works, you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. Now, before we start with Kali Linux, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general or short agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links and Docker files from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. For this video, I prepared two Docker files, so let's take a look at the first one. It's called docker.kali.xfce, so this one will run Kali Linux with the XFCE desktop. First, let's go through the Docker file. And it is similar to the ones that we used in previous videos. For the base image, I'm using Kali Rolling from Docker Hub. The release doesn't really matter. You can also use the latest image, but for this video, I'm using this particular version. Then I'm updating the system and I'm installing the Kali XFCE desktop and Kali Linux defaults. These are the Kali Linux default apps. Of course, we want those. Then I'm installing XRDP and the Tiger VNC server. So you will be able to connect to the container using RDP or VNC. Then in the next step, I'm adding a user by the name test user and I'm giving it a strong password 1234. So here I'm adding the user and I'm also adding it to the sudo group so that the user can install applications for instance. Then in order to start the XFCE desktop, we need to set some environment variables and we also need to start the XFCE session. I'm writing those commands in a script file. This script will then be used by the VNC and RDP server to start up the desktop. Then here I'm configuring VNC to use the same password as the user. Then I'm setting the X startup script for RDP and for VNC. And I'm also writing a custom script to start the VNC server. RDP will be started as a service in the next step. We are almost done. I'm exposing the ports 3389, which is the standard RDP port, and 5902, which will be the VNC port. Finally, I'm setting a few more environment variables. We will see a bit later what they do. At the end, I'm starting a few services. I'm starting Dbus, Systemd, Logindy, XRDP, and the VNC server. I'm also starting the bash shell, just so the container stays in the loop if something goes wrong. That's it. And now let's build the image. So go to Terminal, New Terminal, make sure you're in the right folder and write docker build-f, the name of the docker file. In my case, this is dockerfile.kali.xfce, then dash t, the name of the image. I will call it docker-kali and a dot for the current folder, enter and build. Perfect, build completed. And here is the image in Docker desktop. As you can see, it has over 10 gigabytes, so it is a bigger one. Now let's run the container. Go to Run, Optional Settings. Now here, we need to map the ports from localhost to the container, so we can connect to the container through localhost. First, let's map the RDP port, 3389, then plus, and let's map the VNC port, 5902. Now remember the mentioned environment variables from the Docker file, those here. Using these environment variables, we give the container access to the built-in X server and Wayland compositor on Windows. Yes, Windows has a built-in X server and Wayland compositor. And I made a whole video how to use the built-in display server and compositor on Windows. So if you want to use it yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. Now, in order for this to work, we need to map the path of the display server to the slash tmp folder inside the container. So let's find the display server. You can find it inside your WSL distribution under MNT, WSLG. Now copy this folder and paste it here. And now let's run this one, run. As you can see, the container is running. 
First, I will connect to the container using RDP. So let's open remote desktop connection. This application is pre-installed on Windows. So we want localhost and connect. I trust the container and it's already working. This is now the XRDP login screen inside the container. And I really like how they customize this one. Usually you get a green screen, like nothing spectacular actually, but here on Kali, you get a full Kali logo. This is awesome. Now let's log in with my user by the name test user and the password login. And here we are inside Kali Linux. This one is running inside the container and it is displayed on Windows. So this is the default XFCE desktop that you can find on Kali. And here you can see all the different penetration testing applications. Let's see the file browser. Yes, this is Tunar. Let's also see the memory consumption task manager. So we are using about two gigabytes, which is a bit high for the XFC desktop environment, but you usually get a bit higher memory consumption when you run a full desktop environment inside a Docker container. So this is not so unusual. This was RDP. Now let's see how we can connect to the container using VNC. I will leave this one running and I will open tight VNC. This is my VNC client of choice. So we are connecting to the local host and port 5902 and connect. Now write the password and OK. And we are now connected to Kali Linux using VNC. Now probably you've noticed that this session is not the same as the other one. So if I move this to the left and RDP to the right, now as you can see, the RDP is using a different session than VNC here. We are connected with the same user, but it's not using the same session. Now, another nice thing is that if I close the VNC session and try to connect again with the same password, we get the VNC session as we left it. This is also true for the RDP session. So if I close this one, and connect again with the same user, we get the same RDP session as we left it. Now let me show you one final thing. Let's close that. Leave the container running and let's open the console. This is the root console of the container. And here we want to switch the user to the test user. And now let's run as sudo the xfce session and enter, write the user password. And now look at this one up here. This is the panel from the XFCE desktop. And what we just did, we just started the XFCE session on top of the Windows desktop. Let's minimize all of that. So this is my Windows desktop. And on top of it, we have Kali Linux. So we can now execute Kali applications directly from our desktop. Now, all of that is still running inside the Docker container. This one here, it's still running. Inside are also the VNC session and the RDP session running. Now, this desktop integration is only possible using the built-in X server and Wayland compositor on Windows. So if you're interested, check out the previous video. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get, and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much, and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. This was Kali using the XFCE desktop, and I have also prepared a second Docker file, Kali Mate. With this one, you can start Kali Linux with the Mate desktop. You can find both Docker files in the description. In a previous video, I also showed you how you can run the full Ubuntu Mate desktop inside a Docker container and display the full desktop on Windows. So if you want to run the full Ubuntu Mate desktop in a container yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then like and subscribe. And if you really like the video, you also have a super thanks down there where you can buy me a coffee, for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.